Hey guys, uh, Clark here, and uh, I figured I'd do another video. Uh, I'm doing a video today on my uh, uh, EDC, my everyday carry, just kind of what's in my what's in my pocket, what's in my bag, um, and uh, I figured I'd kind of go over that. I'm I'm a big fan of uh, a lot of the videos on on YouTube and uh, online as far as EDC goes. Uh, you know, I'm a big big firm believer in in uh, you know everyday carry you know, and being prepared for any kind of situation that might pop up and, you know, be able to, uh, uh, make life easier. And at the same time, you know, protecting myself and my family and that kind of thing. So, you know, I kind of want to go through what's, what's in my pocket, what's in my bag. And, um, you know, I haven't done a video in a while and, uh, I know that I've, I've, as a matter of fact, it's been about a year. And so one of the things I, I want to do this year is do more videos. I, I really enjoy it it's a lot of fun to do. So, uh, it's something that I'm going to try to do more of and, and be more cognizant of. So, but today, like I said, I'm do do this video on uh, EDC, what I have in, in uh, my pocket and what I carry in my truck and in my bug out bag, if you will. <coughs> and, uh, so let's, let's get to it. Um, first thing I'll talk about is knives. Um, you know, I, I pretty much carry a knife every single day. Well, I do. I carry a knife on me every single day. If I don't have one on my person, I have one in my truck. <clears throat> but I do carry one uh, pretty much every day in my pocket. Um, I did a video last year about neck knives. Um, you know, I talked about, um, you know, a Spyderco neck knife and the CRKT neck knife and, and some other things. And, and I've kind of gotten away from that. Um, you know, I've carried a lot of pocket knives over the years. Um, you know, and I, and I, I, I went with the uh, neck knife for a while. But what I found with neck knives is they're just a little bit too bulky, a little bit too cumbersome as far as, uh, you know, uh, deploying and that kind of thing. You know, like for instance, this is the, um, that CRKT uh, neck knife that I did carry for a while. Nice knife, great knife. Uh, I did a whole video on it. Uh, if you want to check that out, you can look under my, uh, under my, uh, sub, sub, or my videos, I should say. And I uh, have a whole video on that, uh, this knife kind of compared to the Spyderco. And I do want to make a follow-up video to that as well, just kind of give an update of my thoughts and, and that kind of thing. But again, the problem is, you know, you carry it on you to get to it. you got to reach up your shirt or pull it out. Um, and I just found carrying one in my pocket is much easier. And again, that's something I've done for years and years. Uh, and, and really, the, the knife that's been my staple for a number of years now has been the uh, Kershaw Leak. Um, the very, very popular knife. There's probably a million videos on this knife. Um, I love the design of it. I like the fact that it's nice and thin. Um, I did get rid of the, uh, the clip that comes with it. I put on, this is a clip by MXG Gear. I'll put a link uh, below uh, where, where you can purchase these, these clips. I make clips for all kinds of knives, you know, Benchmade and, and um, Spyderco and... Uh, Kershaw and, and so on and so forth, but they make really, really quality. Um, the fit and finish on this thing is fantastic. It's made out of titanium, super strong, super lightweight, uh, and it allows you to carry that deep carry, uh, which which I'm a big fan of the deep carry. I don't like the knife sticking out of my pocket. Um, I just find it when it's a deep carry, it's much easier to carry and much easier to, to kind of access and that kind of thing. Uh, but the leak, if you don't know much about the leak, it's assisted opening. Um, this right here, is a S30V steel, um, is a Ken Onion designed knife, uh, beautiful knife. It's a little over three ounces, uh, you know, so it's, it's fairly lightweight, um, but again, it's, it's been a great knife. It's something I, I do carry, or has been my, my pretty much everyday carry for, for a number of years, uh, but recently I've, I've started uh, looking at Benchmades, and I got a, several Benchmades that I really, really like a lot. Uh, the first one that I uh, look at today is the uh, Benchmade. Um, this is a mini griptilian right here. Uh, this has the um, the uh, 20C, or I'm sorry, the, the uh, yeah, 20C V steel. Uh, probably a little bit of an upgrade uh, from that uh, S30 V steel. Uh, it has the access lock on it. You know, easy one hand open, one hand closed. It kind of swings open, swings closed. Uh, really easy to access. I did put on that MXG uh, pocket clip as well. I like this one right here because it has a real wide lip at the bottom. It's really easy to get inside uh, your pants as well as take out. 
uh, a little little hole right here. I found this hole to be nice that, you know, when you're opening up, you can kind of stick your, your pinky in that little hole. Uh, so it gives you a very secure grip on the handle. Uh, and then when you when you when you carry the knife or when you have that knife open, it's it's really easy to uh, you know again kind of use that as an extra little little uh, little handle depending on what you're doing. But great great knife uh, weighs a little under three ounces, so it's it's just a tad bit lighter than the leak. It's a roughly the exact same size. I mean they're they're within you know centimeters of each other. If you look at them open. Um, you can see that. Let's see. They're they're almost the exact same height, same blade length, uh, roughly. I think the the leak is like just a tad bit over three inches, and the um, the mini griptilian is a tad bit under three inches. Uh, but this mini griptilian, I, I'm a big big fan of it. This one has the G10 scales on it. Again, the upgraded steel, that uh, 20 CV steel. Uh, very, very nice knife, uh, nice features on it, has that blue inlay, you know, with the gray, um, you know, really a pretty, pretty knife right here. Uh, I find it to be a little bit nicer than this leak. It's a little bit wider. Um, if you look at it, the, the leak is definitely just a tad bit thinner. Uh, the profile on the leak is, is just a tad bit narrower, uh, but you don't notice that or I don't notice it in my pocket at all. Uh, and then recently, I've I've gone ahead and got another Benchmade, and this guy right here is a lot of fun. It's a um, the Benchmade Casbah. This right here, it's a great knife. It's it's a little under three and a half ounces, so it's not much heavier. It's it's 0. 0.4 ounces heavier, but it's a good bit bigger than the uh, Griptilian, the Mini Griptilian, I should say. Uh, bigger blade, about a th little under three and a half inch blade. Um, it is a um, S thirty V steel as well, so it's similar to a leak as far as the steel quality. Uh, it's, the, the handle on it, very lightweight. Um, it's, it's, I don't even know what this material is. It's, it's kind of a plasticky material. Not crazy about the material of the handle. Uh, the fit and the finish is, 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 is nice. I, I would say it's not as nice as the Mini Griptilian. Uh, the Mini Griptilian does have a better feel to it as far as the, the plastic goes. Can you hear that? like a solid solid sound to that mini griptilian but it does have some some nice features to it really the the purchase on the handle is fantastic it, it has a as a lock so you can lock it in place so you can't open it and then when you when you unlock it you know it's an automatic so you push the button and it and it folds out and then you can lock it in place right there so you can't you can't uh fold it down without unlocking it but it does, it, it really does feel nice in the hand when you have it open. Really nice purchase on it. I'm a big guy, I have big hands, so it's nice to have that more of a full size handle. The handle's over four inches long. Um, you know, it has some, some nice grooves in here as well. Uh, you know, some, some grooves on the back as well. Uh, so you can really get a, a really nice purchase and really handle the knife really well. It comes from the factory razor sharp like most Benchmade knives, or all Benchmade knives do pretty much. Uh, I know some people that think Benchmade is the best knife ever and some people don't like them, but my personal opinion is Benchmade makes a fantastic knife. Um, and it is nice as it comes with the, um, the uh, deep carry pocket clip. It's not quite as deep as, well, this was an aftermarket obviously, but you know, even the one that uh, the factory on this one right here is, is a much deeper carry. And the reason I, I, I believe with this one is they have that lanyard hole right there on the end, which I would never use on a, a pocket carry knife. Uh, but you can use it. It's something that, you know, if you wanted to put a lanyard on there for whatever reason, you can put that as well. I'm going to look. I'm gonna, I, I checked on MXG gear. They do not have an aftermarket uh, clip uh, for this one yet, the Casbah or this one at all. I mean, I, I, you know. Again, some people love this knife, some people hate it. I know left-handers may hate this knife because you can see right here, you know, for a right-hander, it's great because everything's on that side, you know, where, where you can easily access it with your right hand. But, um, you know, if you're left-handed, there's nothing on that side. So, you know, if you're trying to, I guess you can manipulate it with those fingers and, and it might feel comfortable. For me, being a right-handed guy, it's, it's not the most comfortable thing, but... Um, you know, I, I it, you know, it, it might be a, a deal breaker if you're left-handed or may not. It may be great for you. I'm not sure. But again, I carry this. I've been carrying this every day uh, for several months. I really like it. 
it, it stays sharp. Uh, the S30V is uh, pretty uh, corrosion resistant. Uh, it keeps a pretty good blade. From my understanding, it's, it's not quite as easy to uh, sharpen this knife as some other uh, steel out there. But at the same time, I don't sharpen my knives. I bring it somewhere to get sharpened, so I'm not really too worried about it. I have not had to resharpen this guy yet, but that the blade retention on the thing is fantastic. Um, you know, I use it, you know, box cutting and uh, just kind of everyday tasks. I haven't done super heavy anything yet, you know, nothing in the wilderness or whatever. But just for daily tasks around town, this thing is fantastic. I also like the way this knife looks, just to be quite honest. It's a, it's a nice looking knife, um, it, although it's a nice big full size, or not full size, but a, a good sized knife with a good sized handle. Uh, it doesn't look too intimidating. So if you're if you're somewhere and say, oh, does somebody have a pocket knife? I need to cut this. You can pull this out, and it doesn't look like you're, you know, pulling out, uh, you know, a, a big uh, mean looking, you know, uh, uh, type knife like Rambo or something. It's it's a nice knife that uh, even you know my wife uh, would use to cut open, you know, a package from Amazon or whatever. So uh, a big fan of this. Uh, again, this has been kind of my EDC. Now, you know, that's versus the Griptilian right there. They're both on the on the uh, table here. So it is a good bit bigger, but it's not much heavier. Like I mentioned, it's it's 3.4 ounces. And this guy right here is just a, a tad bit under 3 ounces. It's like 2.9 something. And then this guy right here is just a tad bit over 3 ounces for the leak. Um, as you can see, the size difference. I like having a little bit bigger knife. It just makes it a little bit easier to carry, um, or, or I should say handle in my hand. And uh, a little bit bigger blade seems a little bit more utilitarian, so you can do a lot more tasks with it. Um, you know, the the again the fit and the finish on this is 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 pretty decent. You know, even though the handle, I'm not crazy about the handle, uh, but you know that lock on it is is really. I mean, you know when that thing is locked, and you know when it unlocks. Um, you know, just a nice solid clicking sound right there as well. Uh, the next thing I want to talk about in my EDC is uh, this right here. This is, and I'll put I'll put the links for these two on here, the Amazon links and uh, uh, everything else. But this is this is uh, called an Uzi Uzi. Um, this is a tactical pin. I carry this with me pretty much every day. Um, you know, this I can carry in my pocket or I can carry it in my bag. Um, this thing is is a really nice tactical pin. You know, it's a, a swivel style. You know, you turn it to uh, you know, pull out the uh, the pin portion right here, and then uh, you know it's it it takes a little bit of time to to fully uh, you know get that pin out and uh, to close it up. But at the same time, this thing is is really really well built. Um, it's made out of uh, aluminum aircraft grade aluminum. You know, everybody says they have that, but um, you know it has a glass breaker on the end as well. But this is a tactical pin, so I mean, you know, if for some reason. Uh, you know, you didn't have anything else on you and, and something happened, you know, this can definitely be, uh, you know, something that you can use for self-defense, uh, protecting yourself, or your family. Um, you know, and again, I do keep this on me, uh, pretty much, uh, on a daily basis. I've had this for a number of years, probably about five years or so. I think it's $20 on Amazon. So it's, it's definitely one of the more affordable tactical pins. Um, never had a single issue with it. It still writes. I saw the same original ink cartridge in there. I, you know, I don't use it for like heavy stuff, but you know, if I'm at the, the post office and I need to, to, uh, sign my name or whatever it may be, you know, it's nice to have a pen on you, uh, something that's reliable like that. And, uh, something that also can double as a, as a, uh, tactical type pen for self-defense and other things. Um, the next thing let's talk about is my lighter. Now this right here is an old Zippo. This is this is actually my dad's. Uh, he, he played for the Buffalo Bills back in the day, back in the in the '60s and '70s, and this was his uh, his lighter right here. And what I did, and I really like this, is I I took out the uh, the original uh, lighter in it, and I still have that. But I put in this uh, butane lighter right here. I got this on Amazon. I'll put the link on there. This is called Blazer. Um, this thing has been great. I've had this, again, I've had this in here for four or five years. You know, you just refill it on the bottom right there. Um, you know, it's a butane lighter. I don't smoke, but it's always nice to have a lighter on you. You just never know when you need one. Um, you know, even if, uh, you know, dealing with a piece of nylon, you need to melt the ends of it or whatever it may be. 
uh, or paracord or whatever. It's nice to have a lighter on you. I do smoke the occasional cigar. It's always nice to have a nice butane lighter on you. And this thing has been great. Um, I do carry it on a daily basis, like I mentioned. Uh, I do like the Zippo. And any of these vintage type Zippos are just cool. Um, I know Zippo makes a ton of different types of of uh, look and feel and fit and finish on these. You know, they got the copper ones. I really like the old copper ones. They're really, really nice. They have a really nice patina on them. Um, but there's just something to be said about a, a, an old Zippo. It just looks really cool, really nice. Uh, you know, go to a lot of pawn shops. They have them there available for, for pretty inexpensive. And again, these, um, these are just really, really great. They're classy. They look nice. Um, you know, uh, and, and they've been around forever for a reason, you know, because they just, they just work, you know, and if you like the butane, like I said, you can put the butane in there. If you like the original lighter fluid kind, I don't like lighter fluid personally. I think it's kind of off putting. Um, and also it leaks in there and it can get in your pockets and all that with the butane. You don't have to worry about that. Um, oh, one thing I forgot to mention on the Uzi, this thing weighs 1.6 ounces. So it's light. I mean, it's super light, you know, compared to, I mean, even the size of it, it's a big pin, but man, this thing is very, very lightweight. Like I mentioned, aluminum frame on that. So it's very, very light. Uh, next thing to talk about is my firearms. And, you know, I live in the, uh, the Republic of Texas, so I have a concealed carry license. So I carry on a daily basis, especially if I go out to public places with my family. I like to, I like to carry, I like to have a firearm on me. Uh, I always have one in my truck as well. Um, and the two guns that I carry on my person on a regular basis is first and foremost is my MMP. This is a, you know, not the newest generation right here, but this is a Smith & Wesson MMP shield, 9mm shield. Uh, I have a Hogue grip on it right here. Um, it is, there's no magazine in it. But this is a great gun. Um, I've had this for years. It shoots very true. Never had any issues with it. I'm a big fan of M&P's Smith & Wesson. I have a M&P uh, AR uh, mil spec. I have, uh, you know, full-sized uh, 9mm M&P, you know, with 17-round magazine. I'm a big fan of M&P's. They're very, very well made. Uh, they shoot really well. I like this OD green. It's just a really nice look to it. Uh, this whole grip is nice, gives you a little bit more purchase on the gun. It, it, it keeps my, uh, my fat hands away from that slide so I don't, I don't get slide bite. Even though it is a smaller gun, you know, you, you do get pretty good purchase. Especially with that magazine, I have that extended mag for it. Um, you know, I believe it just comes with a gun, but, you know, it's nice because it has that extra, extra little, uh, you know, inch or so or three quarters of an inch. Uh, eight round magazine right there, single stack. Uh, you know, again, I carry this in my bug out bag. I'll talk a little in a second about my bug out bag, uh, but I carry this in my bag or I carry it inside the waistband. You know, I, I got this guy right here, a little inside the waistband holster for that uh, MMP. Uh, I bought this from a guy who makes these. It's really nice. It has that sheepskin, uh, in, inside of it right there. So it keeps the gun from, uh, you know, rubbing off any of the, uh, uh, the finish on that gun. Uh, but I don't carry this every day. Uh, I do carry it in my bag most of the time in the back of my truck underneath my seat. But really my EDC, my everyday carry for, for my firearm, and I know some of you guys right now are going to roll your eyes. Let me tell you right now, before you roll your eyes, just hear me out, is this Diamondback DB9. Now, these kind of get a bad rap sometimes because they're very inexpensive uh, some people say they're terrible, they're cheap, they're crap, whatever, and that's great. You have opinions, and I have my opinion too. In my opinion, uh, from having this, owning this gun now for a number of years, probably, probably at least two years, two and a half years, and I've been to the range dozens of times with this, I've never had a failure of fire. I've never had a failure to eject. I've never had any issues. I run all kinds of ammunition through this um, from the super cheap, you know, Russian, uh, you know, steel cased, uh, ammo to, you know, higher end stuff. And this thing has shot perfect for me. Perfect for me, for me. Um, you know, it has a nice little mini beaver tail right here. So even though it is a very small gun, I mean, it's, it's a, it's, it's a very small gun as you can kind of see the difference in size between the two. Very, very lightweight. It weighs, it's substantially lighter. I don't have all the weights on this guy on me right now, but very light, especially without the magazine. You know, here's the magazine right here, a metal magazine. Um, 
Uh, this thing is super lightweight. Um, I did put an aftermarket clip on it as well. So for deep carry, uh, you know, you can put it in your pocket or inside the waistband. Really easy to carry. There is no safety on it. Uh, so it's up to you whether or not you'd want to keep one in the, uh, in the pipe or not. Uh, you know, as an EDC guy, I typically do. Uh, but again, really nice gun. Um, you know, the trigger action on it is, is not the best. It's not the smoothest. It's not, a, you know, uh, uh, you know, high-end 1911 by any stretch of the imagination. You know, but uh, I would trust this with my life. I really would. I'd trust this with my life. You know, as long as you know, any place I go that, uh, you know, does not have a 30-06 or 30-07 uh, sign on the on outside, I carry this guy. Whether it's a movie theater, uh, to church, wherever it may be, I have this in my pocket pretty much all the time. Um, you know, again, unless there is a, um, uh, you know, any kind of uh, issues with it, you know, you know, I don't carry it to work because, you know, that's, that's against our, uh, our, our policy that, that carry a firearm on you. But, you know, when I'm not working and I'm with, uh, with my family, I do carry this guy on a daily basis. Um, and I, I really do. I really like this gun. It's, it's very similar takedown, very similar as fu functionality as a Glock. Um, you know, it's not the prettiest gun. I, I got that like kind of a forest green. Um, I don't know exactly what color that is, uh, but a darker green than that OD green right here in the, the Smith and Wesson, you know, but um, you know, it has a takedown similar to the Glock. Um, you know, it's, it's, uh, really nice inside. The mill work is really nice. Um, you know, even the recoil spring on it. I mean, it's all metal recoil spring and double spring. Uh, you know, the felt recoil on this thing is, is minimal, 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 minimal. I mean, I don't think, you know, to me, uh, uh you know, nine millimeters don't, don't, don't uh, have much recoil at all anyway, but this guy right here is just, it's a phenomenal, phenomenal little gun. Um, and again, try it for yourself if, if you don't believe me or if, or if you had a bad experience with it, uh, you know, that's, that's something that everybody has different experiences with different guns and different things. And, and so that's kind of your own, you know, personal experience. But with me, um, I've had nothing but, but good, uh, uh, good uh, quality interaction with this gun right here. And then the last thing I kind of show you, and I'll, I'll put the, the uh, link. This is my bug out bag. Um, I got this guy on Amazon as well. Uh, nice little bag. You know, this is where I'll carry my, you know, carry my, my guns and, you know, an extra knife or two. And, you know, I, I might throw my Zippo in there if, if uh, you know, if I don't want to carry it in my pocket. Um, this great little bag, you know, I got a little three percenter, uh, uh, you know, uh, on the, uh, the Velcro right here. Uh, but this is a great little bag. This thing was like 15 bucks on Amazon. Super cheap. Nice little bag. Keeps some extra ammo in there. Um, like I said, some extra, extra knives and, and extra pins or, uh, that kind of thing. It has one strap on it. You know, it's an adjustable strap, which is nice, you know, so you can carry it a number of different ways. But I have that in the back seat of my truck. Uh, like I said, I carry that pretty much everywhere I go. I have it on me. It's nice. So I just throw some stuff in there. You know, I keep it out of sight. I keep it, you know, out of reach of, from my, my children, that kind of thing. But great little bag where I can stick everything in there. Uh, kind of the next steps for me as far as my EDC goes. I know one thing I wanted to get or actually uh, looking at right now, doing some research on, and I'll make some videos on it, is getting an EDC flashlight. Um, you know, I have my phone on me and that's kind of what I always used if I need a flashlight is, uh, just the, the phone flashlight, but at the same time, you know, it's nice to have a dedicated flashlight, something that's a much higher lumens and something that if you, if you go somewhere, if I'm, you know, at the, uh, uh, you know, going hunting or something like that, it's just nice to have that, that light on you at all times, you know, so I'm looking at some pocket carry night, uh, lights, right now that again, I'll make some, uh, some future videos on that. But anyway, let me know what you guys think. Um, you know, this is, this is, uh, again, something that, that I enjoy doing and, and I'll, I'll definitely put some more videos out there. If, if there's something you want to see, or if there's something that, uh, you want me to go more in depth about that you saw today, I'll be more than happy to do it. You know, maybe we can do some range, uh, even if, if I can, uh, you know, maybe take this little guy out to the range one day and, and, and uh, do some videos of that and kind of show you guys what I'm talking about as far as, as the, uh, 
you know, how this gun shoots and uh, as far as its reliability goes, uh, I'd, I'd like to do that as well. And then, uh, you know, maybe some more updates on some of the other knives. And like I mentioned, the updates on my neck knives, I, I mentioned before the Spyderco and the CRKT as well. Um, you know, we can do some more update videos. So, but anyway, guys, I appreciate it. Again, all this, all this different equipment, I'll put the, uh, the uh, links in below this video. But if you have any questions, feel free to uh, comment on this video and, and thumbs up it. And I appreciate your time.